one of the things that our audience has asked for is basic tips for soldering. Now, they've seen me solder on the show, and they know I'm horrible. I, I can make it work. <laughs> But uh, it, it's not so great. How, you're better, how about, oh, you're better than I am. I, I learned how to solder doing stained glass windows. So I just lump the solder on, just like you would on a window. Yeah, and unfortunately, lumpy solder, it's not just <laughs> that it doesn't look good. It's just that that could really be really bad. You know, yeah. what I've learned from my time with some of the people from the Hardware Hacking Village at DEF CON has been you need not just good looking, but you need clean solders in order to make sure you don't get things like cold solder joints. Now, luckily, we had one of my friends from DEF CON, Smitty. You may know him if you've ever stopped by the Hardware Hacking Village. He's sort of the, you'll, you'll recognize him. He's the guy wearing the top hat and the kilt. That's sort of a signature thing. But he stopped by the studios and he talked to Brian to bring us soldering 101. Hi, my name is Smitty and I'm gonna be teaching you a little bit about how to solder today. Uh, first thing I want to go into is talking about the different tools that we use for soldering. First and foremost is obviously the soldering iron. I have here a Metcal soldering iron. It is a very nice soldering iron, but you don't have to worry too much about having one that's this nice. This is just what I have. Um, any Weller uh, soldering iron will do. There are lots of different Chinese brands that are available in various different stores like Fry's or Radio Shack or on Amazon. Um, and they'll all do a good job. Soldering irons are mostly roughly equivalent. They get hot, they're a piece of metal, they've got a tip, you're in good shape. Uh, one of the things that you want to pay attention to is the shape of the tip. And most soldering irons have exchangeable tips. For example, this one is a wedge shape. Uh, you can notice that there's a flat edge right there on that one, but if you turn it on the side, how it's kind of a, how, down to a point. Uh, this is a relatively small wedge tip soldering iron. Soldering irons, you're also going to need something to clean your soldering iron. Uh, you can use a wet sponge, you can use a wet piece of paper towel in a pinch. Um, I prefer these metal kind of Brillo pad looking things. Uh, you can get them, again, any place you buy a soldering iron. This one, you can tell, has seen a lot of love. It looks like the one that you use to scrub out your pans after about seven years, right? Um, I've used this one for a long time. They pretty much don't wear out, uh, except they just kind of get flatter. The advantage to these instead of one of the wet ones is that these don't make your soldering tip cold. If you take a soldering iron, the whole thing about the soldering iron is that they need to be hot. And so if you're doing some soldering and then you go over and clean it off like this into a wet sponge, that's going to cool down your tip. This won't do that. That's why I like these. Um, <clears throat> another thing that you will need is a, um, actually, a stand a stand for your soldering iron, some place to put the soldering tip while you're not using it um, so that you don't lay it on the table, it doesn't roll off the table, you don't burn your surface, whatever. This one also has an integrated um, kind of helping hands, but these are great for holding cables or wires that you're trying to solder together. So if you've got a wire and a connector and you kind of need to line them up just right and then go in with a the soldering, these are really good for that. Um, one more piece of uh, equipment that I don't have with me today is a uh, magnifying glass. This one will allow you to connect a little magnifying glass to that knob there, and you can adjust it and move it into the right spot so that you can see what you're working on a lot better. I have a big desk-mounted one with a ring light in it, so you bring it down, and it's got the light here that illuminates the object you're working on, uh, and you hold it in, and you can look at it, it works really well. That's at my house, I'm at the studio today, so I don't have that with me. Um, you got uh, a stand over here to hold your soldering iron. You also want to have something to hold your board. In a pinch, you can use these alligator clips for it, but I really like the Panavice. Uh, this is a Panavice Junior something something. I don't remember the exact model number, but it has these little clamps that you can put your board in and it holds it fast. And then you can go in and start working on what you need to work on without having to also hold the board and you know use your third hand to hold the board and the fourth hand to bring in the solder. I've only got two hands. So I like having these. Um, of course, you're gonna need solder. Solder comes in lots of different flavors and sizes and, and types. This is a simple, what is this, a 60-40? Um, this is an old one, it still has lead. Lead is getting harder and harder to find. Um, I like the finer solders because you can always add more solder uh, for something that you should have used a thicker solder on. You can just keep using more of this. Uh, but if you've got a thicker solder, you can't use it where you need just a little bit of solder. So I prefer the thinner solders, but a thicker solder will work as well. Uh, this is 
what size is this? 0.025. So this is a pretty small, pretty small solder. Um, you want to make sure you use electronics solder, not uh, pipe solder, not for um, uh, plumbing. Plumbing solder uses a different kind of flux that will ruin your circuits. This one has a, um, a rosin core. It's a little goo in the middle of this. This is actually a tube, not a wire. And inside is a little bit of goo. It's called rosin. And what it does is as it heats up, it kind of bubbles a little bit and it cleans off the surfaces that you're going to be soldering together and it makes it a lot easier to solder. Um, Kester is a good brand. Radio Shack's got good solder. Um, again, you can buy them you know, anywhere that you buy the rest of the stuff. Solder wick. Now, I don't know about you all, you may be perfect, but I'm not. I make a lot of mistakes, and so um, I have, I always keep solder wick handy. Solder wick is literally just a copper braid. I'll hold it up to this camera. It's a little copper braid that has some holes in it, and it's, and it's impregnated with a little bit of rosin in there as well. And if you make a mistake, you can go into your mistake, put the solder wick on top of it, push the soldering iron down on it, it will heat up the wick and the joint, and the wick will literally just suck up all of that solder and make, uh, make the component a little easier to pull out, or a lot easier to pull out. As you can tell, I've got some solder on this one that I haven't cleaned up yet. I make up enough mistakes to have two. Um, what else? Let's see here. Diagonal cutters, very important. Diagonal cutters are nice because they have a flat edge here and the cutting surface is right next to that flat edge. I don't know if you can see it on that camera, but the cutting surface is right next to that edge. And so if you lay this flat on the board like this and then cut, it will cut it as close to the board as humanly possible. And for surface mount, you absolutely want tweezers. I've got big sausage fingers. Sausage fingers are not good at holding little tiny surface mount components on the board while you get your soldering iron. That's wonderful, that'll go on the blooper reel. While you get your soldering iron down in there, and you know hold the thing in there and it gets really hot and you end up with calluses on your fingers like me uh, tweezers are very good um, you can get these uh, i bought mine at spark fun actually these are not the spark fun ones spark funs are red but um, you can get these anywhere you buy the rest of the soldering gear i think that's about it i also use keep a leatherman handy leathermans are good for or any multi-tool are good for bending wires. If you want to make a sharp, small bend in a wire, you can do that kind of thing with any pliers or whatever. They also have a wire stripping section in there. This one doesn't have any insulation, but if it did, you could go in there and just kind of strip it off. They're very handy uh, to use for lots of different things. So I always keep one of those around. Um, not strictly a soldering device, but multimeters are also very handy when doing electronics works. If you need to test for a solder bridge, you can use the ohm meter on here or the continuity tester, and that will tell you whether you've got a solder bridge in certain places. If you're not sure what value your resistor is, you can use it to measure resistors. Uh, this one's pretty simple. All it does is um, voltage and resistance and uh, apparently capacitance, who knew? Um, but they come in much more uh, full-featured, complex versions of these that will measure current and other things as well. Today, I'm just gonna be using it for and demonstrate how to uh, measure a resistor, for example. All right, so I told you that I have a really good soldering iron. I'm gonna tell you why this is a really good soldering iron. So the tips are interchangeable. They come out very quickly, no tools required. Um, if you look in the end of that connector, you'll notice that it looks like a coax connector. There's a center conductor and an outer insulator. Um, this is actually an RF soldering iron. It uses radio frequency. Um, one of the advantages to this, you'll notice that I'm touching it, it is cold. It is not hot in any way, shape, or form. I have not turned this on yet today. I will turn this on right now. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In less than ten seconds, I'm already working on soldering. This thing heats up incredibly quickly. Um, whereas a weller, if you were to use a weller or some of the other soldering irons, they would take probably five or ten minutes to heat up. So with all soldering irons, whether they're the expensive Metcal or your reasonably priced weller or your cheapo Radio Shack, one thing you always want to make sure is that you've got a nice shiny tip. That shiny tip means that the solder is flowing and the tip is working and that you are going to have some good luck making some good clean solder joints. If you've got a dull tip, 
Uh, after after it, it, you've turned it on and you got it all warmed up, take some solder, melt the solder on the tip. Do not put your hands underneath it because they will drip. Melt some solder on it. That's called tinning the, the soldering tip. Take your sponge, wipe it off like that. If it comes out nice and clean and shiny like that, you're in good shape. If it comes out dull or um, with color on it or anything other than looking nice and silver shiny like that, then you're gonna have a hard time soldering. One trick that you can do if you don't mind destroying your knife is take a knife and kind of scrape off some of the yucky bits on the soldering tip. And that can sometimes save a bad soldering tip. This one's in pretty good shape, so I don't need to do too much of this. But if you've got a crummy soldering tip, that's something you can do that will help bring it back from the dead. And we really want to thank Mark Smith, Smitty Halibut on Twitter for helping us out with that segment. He's going to be coming by every once in a while to give us some soldering tips. Cool. And I would love it if you would please jump onto Twitter and hit him at Smitty Halibut and uh, tell him that you loved him on Know How. Cool. Now, you do soldering, but not this kind of electronic soldering, right? Yeah, I did soldering on stained glass windows. My mother taught me. It's a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. It's supposed although, to just glob it up. Although now I'm thinking maybe I can put some electronic circuits into a window and have something happen. Y you like could. Dual you, duty. You could, <laughs> but you know, I, I think in any in any case, it's really good to have these basic soldering tips because oh, yeah. most of us, you know, we get the soldering kit from Fry's Electronics or Amazon, and as soon as we're melting solder, we think we're soldering. Yeah. Someone like Smitty, it's kind of humbling to watch him go because he works so quickly and everything looks good. And, and yeah. that's just what happens when you get that kind of practice. Yeah, and that's how you can have a good circuit versus just a glob of solder, solder in the middle right. of two wires. That's right, right. Usually, what I have. Yeah, I, I, I have. I will admit to doing things like sanding down my globs of solder, <laughs> which you're not supposed to do. In, you know, never ever do that. But if you get it right the first time, if you practice it, and if you, if it's something that's actually important to you to have yeah. good-looking, well-functioning solder joints, you got to put in the time to learn the basics.